tough to see everybody out there. So thank you. Uh, definitely an honor uh, on behalf of the, the Bodley family. Um, I grew up with Bob, I guess, from the, uh, in the program. It talks about the loft we lived in in Manhattan. I don't have too many memories of the loft, but I remember living in Brooklyn and Staten Island as we moved around uh, different parts of New York City. I remember going to Lionel Hampton's apartment. He had a really cool apartment <laughs> on the, on the upper, west, upper West Side. Uh, and I remember going to some really neat events, you know, uh, auditoriums like this uh, with, the, with the big band. I remember going to a really fancy wedding where Lionel Hampton's big band was actually just the warm-up act for, uh, for a wedding. Uh, and then we moved back to Cincinnati. Uh, and probably many of you have uh, had the pleasure of knowing my mom, Cynthia, and, and Bob as they uh, did all the events in this area. We had many a Thanksgiving dinner holiday event at our house in Lawrenceburg where the, the bass was always in the corner next to the, the grand piano that my mom tried to play. She did her best. <laughs> she didn't have quite the musical talent of Bob, certainly. Uh, and the, the whole Bodley clan, I know it is uh, at his funeral uh, when, when Bob passed uh, far too early. You know, lots of stories were told when the accordion salesman came around. Uh, his, his mom, Maxine, uh, bless her heart, decided to give it a go and let him buy the accordion. Actually, it was still in the house uh, until a few years ago. Uh, and the accordion went on to a new home. It's still being played today, as I'm told. So hopefully it'll inspire, inspire yet another musician. Likewise, with the bass, uh, my mom, uh, Cynthia, passed away just a few years ago. Uh, and the bass, uh, she, she didn't know who to give it to, right? She had to be the right person. So took a, a lot of time before a, a young uh, bassist impressed her enough that she decided to let him, uh, let him have it. And uh, it lives on and plays on. Uh, so thanks uh, to the, to the uh, uh, Jazz Hall of Fame. This is a great organization. It's, it's awesome to have these, all the musicians be recognized in this way. So I'm, pl I'm proud to have made it here and uh, uh, accepted on his behalf. Thank you. Now, Bob's presence uh, is here with us today in more ways than uh, just one. And to explain what I mean by that, and to say a few words about Bob, is the basis for the Phil Greg trio. That's Aaron Jacobs. Aaron. Okay, um, I don't really have too much to say besides what I said, but just to let you know what Bob meant to me, um, and especially in my formative years, uh, I started playing electric bass, uh, middle school and I got into jazz and my dad took me to a concert at Memorial Hall and it was the three jazz guitar giants of Cincinnati. It was Cal Collins, Kenny Poole, and um, a blank, uh, Wilbur Longmire. And uh, Bob was accompanying them and I was just transfixed on Bob the entire evening. Uh, and I remember turning to my dad and saying, Dad, that's what I want to do. And he said, okay. Um, and I watched Bob every chance that I got and told him that story every chance that I had as well, which uh, he was always gracious about, even though he was probably tired of hearing it. And, um, you know, right before uh, Cynthia passed, I was spending a lot of time with her, just listening to stories of her and Bob in New York and everything, and um, I, I eventually bought the bass, this, this marvel instrument that you see, marvelous instrument that you see up here in the picture. Um, and it's, it's just such an honor to be part of that instrument's life. And it, uh, I don't take it lightly that I'm coming, I'm filling in some really, really big musical shoes. So, um, you know, Bob was really uh, a benchmark of the scene and for me, what it means to be a bass player. Uh, consummate pro, uh, knew so many tunes, had a beautiful sound, was an incredibly supportive and kind person. And I'm just very thankful to uh, have been around him. So, thank you. I'm just going to briefly say a few things. Um, I had the privilege of working with Bob at the Blue Wisp as part of the rhythm section in the Blue Wisp Jazz Club from 1991 until he passed on Christmas Day of 2006. And um, so we're going to play a couple of tunes uh, in dedication to Bob. Uh, one of the, the songs is one that he liked to play. First of all, we didn't play, we mostly backed people up, so we didn't play trio that much on the weekends. We were backing everybody up, and it was a great experience, a great learning experience for me. 
Uh, but these are a couple of tunes that, uh, that he liked to play. The first one is written by a, a bass player named Oscar Pettiford. It's called Tricketism. And then another one, the other one is, is a Cedar Walton tune entitled Firm Roots. He loved to play anything by Cedar Walton. So this is uh, in dedication to Bob, who was a wonderful influence on my life. Thank you. Thank you.